let the attack of the awesome begin. Bonjour, everybody. This is Attack of the Awesome Interviews. I'm your host, Mike, and along with me is my fellow co-host, Susie. Bonjour, people. Uh, our fifth interview this morning is... Actually, this person doesn't really have to have an uh, introduction, per se, because... He is the coolest, most badass French dude you ever meet. He's the one and only Benzai. Woo! Hi, guys. What's up? <laughs> Benzai from That Guy the Glass is here, uh, host and such shows as um, Game Fab, games you might not know, Game Soundtrack, you might not know, Hard Corner, Fuck You, uh, and all that good shit that uh, I hope you like. I wish you wouldn't be listening to that interview. What's up? We are just awesome, just chilling. We are Ben Zion, <clears throat> thanks. Wow. <laughs> we have some questions, and we'll just go right into it. All right. Uh, these first set of questions is from a uh, forum user on that guy with the glasses forums, known as Detroit Metworks. He's a good friend of ours. <clears throat> okay. His first question is, does the American... Surrender monkey crap piss you off as much as I imagine it does? It, oh, it does. Um, that, that, that's for sure. Um, first of all, like I was not aware of that stereotype before I would first come to Chicago. And then someone had to explain that to me. I was like, you know, um, actually on the set of the, the, the that guy with the glasses brawl, like, I, I didn't even notice that he called me that. Um, I was like, yeah, you know, whatever. He said monkey. That's funny. Um, but then, like, you know, I realized, oh, yeah, that's the surrender monkey crap from uh, World War Two, whatever. Um, and, yeah, it does piss me off because, uh, you know, I get, um, <laughs> well, I studied history in college and stuff like that. Uh, not, not, in, not as a major, but, but, but still, you know, like, uh, you learn that... Um, and besides, my, my grandparents were uh, younger, uh, were, they were like 15 or 16 years old during World War II, and, um, and they went into the resistance, they were part of the resistance, and, and, my grandma, and one of my grandmother was like a really big, uh, well-known figure of the resistance um, locally, and, uh, and so that, that's why I don't like, you know, French, just people surrender and fight Nazis, you know, and, uh, and I had to hide stuff like that. So, yeah, it kind of pisses, pisses me off. But, you know, it, uh, then, you know, I can eventually, like, chill that out because, after all, it is a stereotype, and, and stereotypes are not based um, on true facts. So, uh, but what does piss me off is that a lot of people would actually associate the fact that you are uh, of, of a French nationality with the fact that uh, you're a pussy or whatever, uh, even though they're a tough American, even though you know they're not the ones fighting in their troops, but still they're so bad that uh, they assume that then, you know, the courage and glows of all the United States and that French has none of that. Has, uh, um, but whatever, you know, it's stereotype. I think you get angry about it. That's what I've learned. Mm-hmm. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> the next question is, what do you think of Beyond Good and Evil and its planned sequel? Um, Beyond Good and Evil, um, it's a very good game by uh, Michel Ancel. Uh, so it's a French game, uh, if you didn't know that. Uh, I guess you did, though. Um, by the creator of Rayman. Um, i got to be honest, I didn't play through it. Uh, in its entirety, uh, mostly because the PC version was pretty much pr pretty glitched. Um, I, heard, um, I think it's not patched yet, but uh, if I run it, uh, like the game is going to run at 300 at for, uh, 300 frames, but the speed will also be you know uh, sped up. It will actually go at 300 frames per second as if I'm forward on a, on a VCR, you know? Um, so it's like... It, um, then I activated the, the, the vertical sync and... Yeah, the, the weirdest glitch to happen on, on that fucking game. Uh, maybe I should... 
cheap version and, uh, and actually do that, or they're going to re-release it on HD for PS3 and Xbox, I think. And, and my problem with that is that it's just a PC version from Steam that put it onto Xbox. What is this PC, whatever? Uh, and there's no HD texture or whatever, so you're going to play like a GameCube game on, on your um, PlayStation 3, it's going to be called HD. Um, but that's Ubisoft again, you know, uh, Ubisoft is selling you all these um, uh, these old Prince of Persia games and uh, Splinter Cell games now in collections. Uh, they obviously just care about money, um, but that's Ubisoft for you. Uh, so, uh, as for the sequel of Beyond Good and Evil, I'd like to see some actual stuff, because I think the Last thing we saw was this leaked part of a trailer that eventually never came out. Uh, so I, I don't think it's on its way anytime soon. Uh, I think we'll wait for 2012. And maybe it will be like a download-only title. I think that uh, they're going to test the popularity of the franchise uh, through downloads of the, um, the Beyond Good and Evil HD, because the original game bombed the last generation. Uh, so they're going to test the popularity and... Eventually, if that's successful, uh, Devin, I like uh, trying to to get going on the sequel. That's that. Sweet. Awesome. Um, if they made the Benzai movie, who would you want to play you? It would be like uh, so. Wait, wait. Uh, would that be a movie about uh, Benjamin Daniel, the guy who who uh, acts as Benzai, or would like, it be a movie about my life? I it think be a it's movie about Benzai going around. I think it's more about um, the character Benzai. Okay, like uh, Benzai goes to uh, Taco Bell. Uh, yeah. Like ben, Barry and Ben go to Taco Bell. <laughs> <laughs> I think that be. I think that be the movie uh, that or Barry and Ben undercover cops. Um, yeah, uh, I think that uh, someone who would play me. Uh, you know what? Just to piss everybody off, it would be Michael Cera <laughs> with a beard and, and glasses, pretending he's not Michael Cera, but, but eventually he's gonna fall in love with some girl, and he's gonna and and, and she works at Taco Bell, and he's <laughs> like Barry has a car. He's like Barry, you know, like you got you know uh, you gotta give me a ride, dude. Like she lives in she works in this Taco Bell. <laughs> in Kansas, and we're in Paris, man. And, and so they're going to try to go by car, um, and once they hit, like, Britain, uh, and they'll be like, fuck, man, like, you mean your car doesn't go to the ocean? Fuck, and, and that's going to be just as stupid as uh, these Errol and Kumar movies, so there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, now, did the recent strikes affect you much? <laughs> no. Uh, I only uh, saw them on TV because uh, I don't live in a, uh, I don't live in a, a, a city big enough to have like these big strikes. Um, I know, uh, but I know that from an American point of view or uh, for any point of view, when they see the report on French strikes, like it kind of seems scary, uh, especially when I saw like um, these pictures that that went around the world. Um, it can look pretty bad, and at some point I was like, then myself, I was like, oh shit, man, like, shit's are going down in Paris. But eventually the government, the, the government didn't move a finger, or pretty much. Uh, so, um, so it did not affect me, which is fine, because, you know, I don't, I don't ride a car, so, you know, that didn't stop me. I didn't go there because there was no rally, and I'm, quite frankly, way too lazy to go on strike. I did went on strike when I was in college. Mm -hmm. But you know that's part of your college, of your college life. When you're a student, you have to go on a strike yeah. um, every now and then. You know, it's it's part of your life. Uh, but nowadays, like I think I'm just way too lazy. Uh, besides, um, I think it was much more important the strikes that were going on in UK or uh, not in UK in Greece. In Greece, they have like legitimate reasons to really go ape shit. Same yeah. for. Um, uh, Tunisia or uh, Algeria, and, and, uh, there are like shits are really going down. Uh, France, in, in France, we are very loud because we have this history of uh, going on strike. 
um, because that's how the French Revolution went on. But apart from that, we're just very loud as uh, people. Uh, but our strikes aren't as important as the one going on in North Africa right now, for example. Mm -hmm. So it did not affect me, and sadly did not affect my country. Um, but we'll have to wait for the next elections. Exactly. <laughs> Alrighty then. Uh, and the last question by Detroit is, you are stuck on a self-sufficient Greek island for the rest of your life. What four ladies do you pick to join with you? <laughs> can that be any lady? Uh, oh. can, can, can that be anybody? Oh yeah, anybody. <laughs> <laughs> He's thought about this question know, um, long and hard. <laughs> one. Um, well, I think um, I would have to. If if I have to pick four women, uh, I would have to pick uh, one that's entertaining, one that's really hot, one that really knows how to cook, and uh, one uh, that's really cuddly and warm. Um, so um, let's go for um, porn star um, uh, Gianna Michael. Oh yeah. Then porn star Sunni. Then porn star Lacey Duval. And then porn star um, Tyla Chavez. There you go. Oh, sweet. <laughs> I hope you can do <laughs> it. <laughs> There you go. Yeah, basically that, that, that question amounts to uh, who are your favorite porn stars. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> That's a real weird set of questions because there are very serious questions about strikes and stereotypes and history, blah, blah, blah. And, and then there's like these stupid questions about having sex on, on a third guy. And... I know. That's how Detroit is. He just comes up with the weirdest shit. <laughs> <laughs> we love him for that. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the next questions are by another form regular known as the Movie Brat, and he comes up with some good questions for us, as always. <clears throat> the, the first question is his running question in all our interviews. What is your worst nightmare that Freddy Krueger would exploit to kill you? Oh, um, well, that's a good question. Um, I don't know, um... I really fucking hate uh, Chucky. Uh, Chucky was part, uh, I had. I would have nightmare about uh, Chucky like the, um, Ch from Child's Play, like every night when I was like a little kid, uh, because I saw that movie way too early. Um, so uh, I think we explored that because like, that still freaks me out to a certain extent. Um, yeah, I, I think it's pretty much dead. Like I think that uh, Chucky would chase me. Uh, but then, like, Chucky would have, like, some sort of mask, and it'd be Freddy Krueger. Or he would just kill me, and and I wouldn't know he was Freddy Krueger. But, yeah, it'd be Chucky. Chucky freaks me out still to this day. Mm -hmm. uh, now, what's your opinion on the movie Highlander and its sequels? <sighs> Fucking Highlander, man. Like, I, I don't know what's... What Spoonie's obsession about it because he seems to only like one movie and mm -hmm. then like uh, pretend it should be a franchise with like detailed stuff about it where whereas like they obviously screwed it right after the first one which was not so good of a movie to begin with like I don't <laughs> care that much about I don't fucking care at all actually about Highlander I could do without that movie at all uh, you know there are much much better movies than that in the 80s when you look back at it it's very cheesy, very down to earth, very simple plot. Um, it's a nice twist that they're immortals, but oh my god, like you know, since they wasted it right after one, why keep going back and trying to seek something, um, you know, uh, salvageable mm -hmm. into that garbage pile of crap that that is like the TV series, that is like uh, the cartoon series, the fucking games, mm -hmm. uh, the direct to DVD. You know what, like, even that anime that they released, like, this direct dvd uh, animated movie that was made by uh, uh, Kawajiri, the guy who made uh, Vampire Hunter D. Bloodlust, that's his worst movie. Mm -hmm. 
that's the uh-huh. first movie by Kawajiri, and um, I was like, what the fuck, you know, like, <laughs> it's, it, it looks very lazy, like, the plot was really stupid, um, it's decent by Highlander standard, it might be the best Highlander movie for all I know, because the first one seriously doesn't strike me much, um, it's okay, but it's okay 80s style, uh, Again, yeah, no, like, you know, Spoonie really likes that movie for some reason. Uh, uh, I, I, I frankly don't know why, because, like, um, for example, he has sometimes this Videodrome poster, uh, you know, um, behind him when he's doing reviews. And Videodrome <laughs> is such a visionary work and such a groundbreaking masterpiece. Um, it came out, like, in the 80s, too, that... Um, I know you can, like, seem to worship um, that movie so much, uh, Highlander 1, while having seen Videodrome and, and thinking something like, uh, like you know, that Highlander is one of the best movies ever. Mm-hmm. Uh, whereas, like, much, much better movies came out back then. Especially fucking Conan, or, you know, like, so many movies are better from that era. It's just a very cheesy, generic 80s movies. And I could name, like, a hundred movies that are way better than uh, fucking Highlander. So, yeah. yeah, I'm not a fan, in case you didn't notice. <laughs> um, I'm, and, and I suffered through that TV series because my cousin would like to watch it when we'd be in holiday. And, and, and it was garbage. Really, I didn't like it. Okie dokie. Um, and uh, how did you get introduced to that guy with the glasses.com? Uh, how did I get in? How did you get introduced to it? Oh, you mean like, um, how, how did I get to know the sign and all that? Um, yeah. Actually, it's uh, kind of old. Um, my uh, girlfriend was, a, um, my girlfriend actually, you know, we were really into uh, the Angry Video Game Nerd, uh, so much so that we would actually do fan sub of the Angry Video Game Nerd back in Seven, and um, and back then it was a shit. It, it was a shit, you know. Like um, it, every video was so amazing, and we watched them like ten times in a row. Mm-hmm. And at some point, like she came to me and said, "Oh, just this guy that uh, kind of does the same thing, but with movies. It's very funny." I was like, "Yeah, you know, I'm pretty sure it's just a rip off, lame shit, you know. Um, let's see what he's got." <laughs> and uh, and what he was doing was really good. Uh, I think the first one I saw was a. Uh, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, or uh, the Power Rangers one, or the, the Super Mario Brothers, like some of the first oh, yeah. things she's done. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, not necessarily the Transformers 2, but one of the first batch of you know, really edited reviews. Mm-hmm. And so I got to, to know Doug on YouTube, like not personally, but you know, I, I would check out his videos. And so when you published a trailer about that guy the glasses, uh, I think on the very first launch day, I came to um, I came to the site, and uh, and then you know, um, and then the rest is history. But yeah, uh, I basically checked the site like on its very first day of existence, pretty much. Wow. Mm. Uh, the next question is, what's your opinion on the new American Godzilla remake? So far, especially with Garth Edwards of Monster Fame directing. Oh, I didn't know about that. Um, I don't know. Like, I really like Godzilla: Final War. Uh, it was very awesome. Um, but I don't think I have much of an opinion on that uh, because, uh, quite frankly, I'm not like a big monster movie fan, like uh, and like James Wolf. I checked out his uh, Godzilla thon videos; they're really good, uh, especially if you don't know shit about Godzilla like I did. Um, but I really like Godzilla: Final War. It's fucking awesome because uh, it's directed by a guy with Versus, and Versus is fucking amazing. Um, but. Yeah, I don't have much of an opinion on that because, uh, yeah, I'm not a big monster movie buff, and I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure you can do monster movies anymore. I'm not sure it really works. Uh, Cloverfield was fucking garbage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, next question 
The last question by Movie Brad is, which nostalgic shows hold up for you? Uh, fucking X-Men, the animated series, man. Uh, <laughs> I saw that show, like, yet again, like, maybe for a fourth time, uh... And in its original version, uh, we had a French dub, but uh, I got the episodes in, in English. Uh, and my God, it still, it still is the best incarnation of the X Men. Period. Mm-hmm. Even in the comic book, even compared to any, uh, well, I haven't read every X Men comic books ever because you know I'm not that huge um, into comic. But it seems that you know whenever. However, I look at it like the animated series from the 90s, apart from the the last batch of episodes, which had like uh, it kind of changed the design on the fifth season. But but my God, like this series like kicks ass. Like if you remember, <laughs> like most uh, most of the episodes were two parters with like very devil, uh, really well devil plot. Um, it's it's amazing. The animation is spot on. The design is really faithful to what a comic book cartoon should look like. The production value back then was amazing. And it's still, that, that's why it still holds up. Mm-hmm. The same for Batman. When you're watching old school Batman uh, from the 90s, uh, it almost looks like uh, you're watching an animated movie. Because yeah. you get this score going on. You yeah. get like uh, these layers of shadows. Uh, it, mu- it moves beautifully. Um and I, the kind of same thing happens with um, X Men. It doesn't look like an animated feature, but it uh, feature film, but it does look like a very, very well animated piece. Whereas now you can have uh, real good design, but the animation would would would, uh, would be pretty much lazy. Mm-hmm. I tried to compare it with uh, X Men Evolution, which I kind of liked, but uh, it doesn't. Holds up to the old series, even even in terms of animation. Even though the animation and X Men Evolution is uh, really cool, um, the old X Men series is very sad. Like it's m- way more mature in terms of themes developed. Like it deals with racism, homosexuality, mm-hmm. um, segregation, uh, the future. Even though like the future is a big ripoff of Terminator, <laughs> like his story arc with Cable was very good. Um, Mr. Story arcs are fucking awesome in that uh, in that show. Uh, so uh, yeah, I think if I had to keep one of the nostalgic show, that would be it. That <laughs> and City Hunter, uh, which is an animated, uh, which is an anime that came out in the eighties. That came out in the eighties in France too. Uh, that's not what that well known in Fran- uh, in uh, in the United States. I'm afraid uh, it's freaking huge in Japan and in France as well. Um, there's a movie with Jackie Chan. I'm pretty sure everybody's seen that scene where Jackie Chan dresses up as Chen Li and beats up someone dressed up as Ken. That's from the movie City Hunter, which is a live-action adaptation of a manga, um, which was uh, which then went on as an anime. Um, which and the anime is really good and really holds up to this day. Very mature stuff about um, uh, a private detective. That's also the best shot in whole of the in the whole world. The guy is the best shooter, and um, and also he's a real pervert. So there's a lot of um, very very funny situation going on. Um, <laughs> if you have to worry about City Hunter, it's all over it as well. It's awesome. 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 <laughs> <laughs> That's our favorite word. Awesome. I know. <laughs> <laughs> These next set of questions is our is by a friend of ours known as the Hardcore Kid. And he says first, let me say that it's been an honor to ask Benzai these questions since he's the first contributor besides the nostalgia critic I've ever watched on Channel Awesome. Cheers to you, Ben. Oh, thanks. Thanks a lot, man. Uh, I, I hope though that you're checking out the others now uh, because like everybody's watch or watch. Uh, definitely, but uh, yeah. I, uh, oh, uh, you know, um, it's uh, it's very pleasant to hear such things. Uh, even though, like, you know, I, I don't really like when people put like an order. Even though, you know, you can't help to have your favorite and all that. But you know, uh, it's okay at some point to say there are good reviewers there, and not you know, oh yeah, hits that, then watch this one, and then watch this one because it's not as good, but still okay. You know. 
Uh, there are good uh, good talents working there. Um, no need to place an order, but I'm very, very glad that you're saying that to me, uh, sir. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's very sweet. I know. Uh, his, his first question is, where did the name Benzai come from? All right, uh, it, it's not that much of a secret. It's uh, basically my name is Benjamin, and um, in back, it's you no, know, it's it's a nickname that I chose very quickly when I was like maybe eleven, like mm-hmm. in the very very early days of the internet, and um, so twelve years ago. Um, so me, it was the early years of the internet um, because I didn't have it at home. Um, and basically, like uh, I was a lot, I, I was really, really into manga and, uh, and anime then. And, and um, I decided, you know, um, my name is Ben. Uh, the Japanese say Ben Benzai a lot, even though they don't. But whatever, it's a stereotype. <laughs> uh, they say Bonsai a uh, a lot. So um, there you go. I'm gonna expand in Bonsai, and and you have Benzai, and that's basically, that. That's really. <laughs> Well, there is to it. It's, uh, it's the next of my uh, my fondness for um, Asian culture and not just Japanese. I was a lot into Hong Kong. Hong Kong like, uh, as well, uh, because I was um, just introduced, I had just been introduced to uh, John Woo films from Hong Kong, and um, uh, there you go. There we go. <clears throat> the next question is, why do you treat Barry like crap? <laughs> oh, it seems that there's a problem, because I can't hear you guys. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> you hear us now? <clears throat> just, <clears throat> can you hear us now? Yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. Okay. <laughs> Crisis averted. <laughs> all right, all right. The next question is, why do you treat Barry like crap? <laughs> because I love him so much. Uh, you know, um, uh, I don't know if there's a, an English saying that says the same thing as this French saying, but basically... Um, we say that uh, the more uh, the worse you treat someone, the more you love him. Uh, you know, because <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's kind of strange, but yeah, you know, like uh, if he's your favorite character, uh, you want to have him do like the worst shit and see him like uh, suffer for the most miserable stuff and still, you know, trying to make the best out of it. Uh, it's so much fun, you know, um, because what what would be the point? For comedy to just have a cute bear and it would just be hugging him and stuff like that. Like, oh my bear, I love it. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> no, you know, like it's funny because he looks like the cutest thing on earth. Mm-hmm. Yet I treat him like he looks like the worst thing on earth, and and that's where uh, that that's where I think um, that that's why I think a lot of people think that's pretty funny. Yeah. Um, because they don't want to see when you see Barry like he's such this cute, adorable thing. You don't want to see him in the microwave, whereas you know that you, you could just turn a button and and the fucking toy will be, be wasted for forever, you know. Uh, so 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 that's that's the cool thing. <laughs> uh, now the next couple of questions from the hardcore kids. Um, now the first video he ever watched was uh, your top five what the fuck moments in Ralph Bakshi's Lord of the Rings. What do you think of Bakshi's other movies, specifically Fritz the Cat and Wizards? I haven't seen any, uh, to be honest. Um, he has done like this. Um, I don't know if that's one of one of the ones you named, but uh, I know he's done uh, um, a Harry Fanta- uh, fantasy flick with like a very kick-ass uh, cover art. Yet when you look on the back of the DVD, like it looks like shit. It looks like Lord of the Rings. By Ralph Bashki. Uh I'm not sure I would like any of his movies if uh, the animation techniques is the mm-hmm. same use, like this weird-ass rotoscopic shit. Um, 
really like I'm not sure uh, I'm not sure on cut to like any of Bashki's movies. Lord of the Rings was still fucking terrible, even though the nostalgia yeah. critics said it was okay in its uh, old versus new. I think it's a piece of crap, mm-hmm. uh, and and I don't care if the um, rotoscopic shot couldn't be done in time or whatever. Like uh, you can't just paint celluloids over film footage and call it animation. It's not. It sucks. Yeah. It's stupid. It's, <laughs> it's it's a pile of crap, really. And the character design is some of the worst I had ever, first, I had ever seen. Uh, so I couldn't care less about his other movies if they're just as sluggish, boring, and, and, cra- and the problem with his rotoscopic acting is that then it doesn't fit animated acting. It fits nothing you know it's it just looks plain weird yeah um if, if you want to see well animated well decomposed and really mature story then watch fucking Gandalf, <laughs> um, which i think was called the future wars in um in english but that's a good that's a good animated movie of about the same period, and <laughs> it has sluggish animation in a good way. Same thing for uh, heavy metal. Uh, uh, Ralph Bashki, or do you care? Uh, maybe I should. Uh, some of these other movies, but, but I, frankly, I don't want to. <laughs> Don't blame you there. Um, now the next question by the hardcore kid Benzai is: Are you ever going to do a nostalgia critic style retrospective of any movies like the Arthur and the Minimoy films? Um, I think that uh, yeah, you know when um, when uh, Arthur and the Invisible Three comes out in um, in DVD, I'll. Uh, I, I might do like a retrospective uh, on the whole franchise because this trilogy, you know, like uh, you know, it, it's it's commonplace to to use hyperbole like, oh, it's the worst shit ever, like it seriously pissed me off and whatever. But Arthur and the Invisibles trilogy is the worst trilogy ever to hit a theater. Yeah. It's the worst kind of movie ever, like, was a second movie that is the most useless hour I spent in my life. <laughs> I, you, you, you need to see that. Maybe uh, I'll, I'll try to tell the world, but that would mean that I would have to, to watch them over again. Okay. <laughs> I really don't want to. No. Luc Besson, Luc Besson is out of his mind with this movie. It's, it, I'm not sure he even directed. I, I'm not sure he even went on the set. Like uh, he must have hired his retarded cousin to to direct these movies. <laughs> they are. <laughs> <laughs> the picture design is. It's just like, um, oh man, like it makes you want to go puke. It's all right, you know. Um, but I'm, the problem is that it leaves you speechless mm-hmm. because it's such a void of creativity it is horrible really really horrible and uh and i can't believe it exists and he pitched that uh, and made it um a trilogy i'm not sure it's gonna hit uh i'm sure it did not hit the united states because uh the first movie was such a pile of crap that it would only be released uh two and three uh to france that or there are coming uh, very late, that's it. Uh, but, oh my God, like, you know, there's a lot of things wrong about Europa, uh, you know, the Luc Besson's uh, studios, mm-hmm. but this is the worst shit they've ever published. Really, <laughs> like, it's the worst piece of shit. Their best, their best movie uh, to this day, I think, is either Danny the Dog or Taken, but apart from that, the rest of whatever they've put uh, they've, they've put up on theater is fucking garbage. And Arthur and the Minim- and the Invisibles is the epiphany 
of the crap uh, Europa is capable of. It's terrible. But, well, it doesn't have parkour ninjas because uh, all of their movies have parkour. Um, this one doesn't, but my god, it has worse. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we can look forward uh, to that review then? <laughs> indeed. Uh, the next question he asks is, uh, he saw your discussion videos with the Amazing Atheist slash the dis Distressed, distressed Watcher yeah. Yeah, in, his, in his first collab videos. How, how are you able to get a hold of them, and what do you think of them in general? <laughs> well, you know, um, I was not ready to have such a question, um, but I do get asked a lot about what the fuck is Ben's like doing with that bastard and whatever, because he's got such a bad reputation. I think he likes it that way. He likes to have, he likes to divide uh, opinion, you know, because, uh, well, that's what he does, that's what he does best, I think. Uh, as for me, and I hope it won't come uh, too much as a big shocker for people, I just love his work, be it on, uh, as the amazing atheist or as the distressed watcher. I just love his stuff. Um, uh, sure, it's very caustic. It's very acid. Um, but I, I, I love it. Uh, he likes to divide and shock people. Uh, that's his style. I think he does it very well. Uh, sure, it won't... It won't really please like uh, the American sensibilities some people have. Uh, in France, it, you know what? If, if his channel was in French, he wouldn't look so uh, daring or um, subversive. Mm -hmm. It would just be one of uh, another uh, rambling guy. Um, but in the United States, you know, he has the balls to come up and say such things. Uh, some things that, that, that would make people uncomfortable. Um, as for uh, how did I get a hold of him, um, I think that's Mike that I asked for. Um, Mike Michaud, I, I asked for um, TJ's Skype information and gave it to me, and I hoped, I was crossing my fingers, you know, I hope he's not one of these, like, you know, very lonely guy, you know, the lone wolf type. Uh, but no, he answered my call, and... Um, and then we made appointments. Uh, he really wanted to do that series with me. Uh, even though, like, you know, I'm still waiting for a third podcast episode in the making uh, because we have the subjects down. You know, uh, next one should be on Paul Verhoeven sci-fi movies, uh, which are extremely good. And this time it's a subject we both agree on. And, uh, and I really love our conversation. And, you know, uh, even though, like, uh, it can seem that I'm the one that, you know, is dragging him to do that. Uh, when, when I eventually get a hold of him, because the guy is really busy, uh, he's always telling me, oh, you know, you know, I was afraid that you would have found someone else to discuss this movie with, whereas I really want to do that series. It's interesting. Uh, so it's a very great collaboration. I'm very glad, you know what, that people are surprised uh, that TJ is doing a collaboration with uh, someone like me, for example, on a, a movie subject, and he's acting civilized, actually, um, because a lot of people have a bad opinion on, um, on TJ. Uh, he's a very, very well-spoken and, and knowledgeable man um, on the subject he's discussing. Um, so, uh, so I'm glad I'm doing that, and, uh, and even though it, I, I know that some people are actually pissed, I know that some people think that TJ doesn't have a place in that guy with the glasses. I think he has, uh, because I think he brings something that uh, we didn't have before. And, and I'm glad I'm doing this podcast with him, because uh, I've been do uh, willing to do a podcast with that kind of tone for a while. And I think TJ is the perfect person to discuss that in the tone I wanted to have. So there you go. Awesome. Uh, indeed. Uh, <clears throat> the next question is what is your favorite video that you've done? Um, I don't know, like, uh, there's one that I watch a lot again, over and over again, it's the, but it's more nostalgia that does it than actually the most well-made video, uh, to, per se, it's the, um, the Reno vlog, A Frog in Reno. Oh, <laughs> uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> 
I, I love watching that shit when I'm feeling down because uh, it brings a smile to my face. Uh, I really like the music I used here and there. You know, it's a it's a very cheerful atmosphere. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I love watching that and um, and basically going back in time and being in Reno again. I can't wait to be uh, to be back to the United States again with all my friends. Um, apart from that, I think the best video ever is uh, might be this Ray Play um, review that I did because I really liked the way I did it uh, mm -hmm. and and I think it's really funny. Um, that or the International Karate Plus Games You Might Download episode. That was a really good one. But to be honest, uh, my favorite series by far is Game Soundtrack You Might Not Know because I'm just, with that show, I'm just creating the kind of show that I'd want to watch. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, I'd, uh, you know, I'd want to watch my other shows, mm -hmm. but this is something that I wouldn't find. You know, it's not a review, it's, it's something different. It's commenting on music and you can see the games for what they are so it's an altered uh, gameplay footage per se and I really like that um, because I could watch gameplay footage with just the music on it like uh, no sound effects and whatever just um, you know uh, appreciate the soundtrack appreciate the gameplay and if I want I'm reading the subtitles to learn a bit about the game um, that it, I, I love I love that kind of stuff. Um, it's pretty much what Substance TV does, and I love what they do. Um, but but I was doing game soundtrack you might not know before. So there you go. Um, but still, um, yeah, game soundtrack you might not know. I'd say. Okay, that's awesome. And uh, are there any videos that you wish you could go back and work on to fix up any mistakes? Oh, uh, there's a lot of them. Um, um, because uh, I did, uh, there's a few stuff that I got wrong, um, even though I can't name uh, any right on top of my head. But there's a lot where the editing sucks, uh, especially the earlier ones. Uh, the Metamorphic Force, the, the very first game you might not know, uh, blows my ass. It's terrible. Um, but, you know, like, uh, it has the charm of being my, my first review, so I can mm -hmm. look back at it fondly and see how I improved. Uh, but there there are a few things that I got wrong. Um, I can name any right now, but I think in my top five, for example, top five movies of the 80s, I should have put Videodrome, uh, that's for sure. And then I regret that in my top five from the 80s again, um, number one is Conan, for those who haven't seen it. And you can see my mouse cursor on on the, the footage of the movie, on, on the extracts that I'm showing. And that's very distracting. I'm talking over a movie, explaining how I love, um, you know, the uh, anti-theistic uh, uh, subtext of the movie. And and all, all all you can see is a mouse cursor <laughs> above uh, above the footage, and and yet that's very distracting. That, that that's something I'd go back and fix if I wanted to. And then oh, uh, lately I published a, a review of um, the Bowers Arietti by <laughs> Studio Ghibli. Yeah. And in like three days after putting that review online, I realized that uh, I cut. I had cut uh, one of the sentences short, and so at some point one of the sentences makes no sense, and um, and, and basically it's a sentence when I said that uh, uh, it, uh, the movie has some very cheesy dialogues about nature, but then it picks up with very um, gripping scenes about holding life in your hands, literally. Mm -hmm. And and basically the, the sentences just starts with, in your hands. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> and so I went back on the comment section, I put the sentence, the extract of the, the written review uh, of the script were, uh, you know, to kind of fix it because I don't have the, the you know, the, the Sony Vegas project so I, can, I cannot go back and re-edit it uh, to find the extract. So all I can do is uh, tell you to go on my website, benzai.com.com 
mm -hmm. and and read the text review because it, I'm just reading it over uh, the footage. Um, but yeah, I kind of regret that because uh, to to me it was an important point of the review is that it picks up, you know. Um, mm -hmm. now, whereas, um, yeah, there you go. <laughs> no problem. And the last question by the hardcore kids: um, As a fellow hardcore kid, what is the most hardcore game you've ever played? Oh, definitely Steel Battalion. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a shame I don't own that game anymore, but I'm going to buy it sometimes when I, whenever I get 200 bucks I don't know what to do with it uh, I'll go buy another um, yeah because it's 200 bucks uh, I'll go buy another Steel Battalion for Xbox uh, that, that game was <laughs> like when you were playing that fucking game you knew you were not playing you knew you were playing something different you knew it was serious business uh -huh. because that controller it was like was like an arcade machine, and even an arcade machine don't have fancier controller. It it was awesome, and uh, and definitely the most hardcore thing I had ever played and I had ever owned. Mm -hmm. uh, something fucking amazing. Awesome. Sweet. All right. These next set of questions is by uh, another farm regular known as Setzer Transfer. Uh, his first question is, Do you prefer American French food or French American food? American French food or French Amer uh, French American food. Uh, I go to McDonald's and Quick, which is a fast food restaurant as well, uh, all the time. French American French uh, French American fast food. <laughs> okay. Uh, how did Barry survive getting blown up in Kickassia? Uh, duct tape. <laughs> <laughs> Something you don't know. <laughs> That's no. <nice. laughs> okay. Uh, now, how many takes did your average scene take in Kickassia? Um, um, maybe something like three or four. Um, I don't know. Like sometimes, Doug. Um, but but it was my fault, you know. Like uh, we are very tired, and my English was going all over the place. So uh, most of the time, I wouldn't get a pronunciation right. Uh, mm -hmm. So we had to redo that scene, and then the sound, you know, was not as good because uh, you know the wind was blowing all the time. So I had to redub a couple of things. Um, the same for Barry's part. But I'd say I'd say three or four. You know, like we didn't spend hours getting the French guy to do his scenes. <laughs> Um, what was your favorite joke in Kikassia? Favorite joke in Kikassia, uh, it's not so much a joke. It's, uh, it's uh, you know, after um, Board James is, like, explaining how Risk works, the game. Yeah. Uh, uh -huh. You have Paul that says, all right, let's do this. And the way <laughs> he says it, like, cracks me up. Because it's, like, so into playing that game. Uh, I, I think that's that's one of the best thing in Kikassia. Yeah, that makes me laugh every time. <laughs> His next question he asked is, uh, "Are you getting sick of my questions about Kikassia?" Yeah? <laughs> um, no, you know uh, I've never really talked Kikassia a lot. Uh, never really got the chance, to, and I'm not, and I'm never really asked about my experience with Kikassia yeah, because I, I guess uh, because I. I did that vlog and people got their questions answered already. Uh, but no, no, I'm not. Okay. <laughs> uh, who is your favorite reviewer on That Guy with the Glasses, Blister Thumbs, and the That Guy with the Glasses forums? Um, that would be uh, Phyllis or um, uh, Phil, uh, yeah, I think that's Phyllis, really. Like, he's the one that I'm like, oh, Shit, like, I, I missed that one. Oh, I gotta see that. So, yeah, Phyllis. Okay. Even awesome. though, even though, and, and that's funny, even though I hated Phyllis when he showed up, when he first showed up with his Mac and Me review, <laughs> I hated that review. And, and, and I actually put a comment on that, like, this doesn't get my vote to stay on the track. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's quite a turnaround. Um, now, how does it feel to not be the only French guy on the site anymore? Um, 
Um, I don't know. It's kind of weird because now, like, you know, I read Twitter message that uh, from either Scarlett or Holly, which is uh, one of the admin, and and what are, what are saying that said Panda can uh, provide a French accent when I uh, when I'm not available. It kind of saddens me because, but. And also, I think it's good because now it won't be, oh, the French guy, you know, uh, now I can be more than the French guy when, uh, next time I go to the United States because there'd be more than one. So you have to refer to me uh, with something I actually do other than being French. Um, but it's okay, you know, Seth Panda came to my house. Uh, we did collaboration work before it was uh, fully featured on the site. Um, so uh, obviously I'm glad he's here. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, now this next question is a little bit strange, but I'm sure you'll give us a great answer. Is the cake a lie? Uh, the cake? The cake. The cake. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just knocking my axe. Uh, <laughs> no, the cake is not a lie. Uh, I saw a video where you can glitch through Aperture Science and see the actual cake. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Short and sweet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, the next question is, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> well, did that, uh, I, did that question was uh, wait, was that question asked uh, back in uh, 1999? <laughs> what's up? <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, these next questions are by me of course uh, what kind of music do you listen to and what musicians and bands do you listen to um, I listen to metal um, usually melodic or um, uh, symphonic metal uh, mostly or video game soundtracks pretty much, or a movie soundtrack, but uh, outside of the soundtrack world, uh, my main genre is metal, um, but I also like um, the guy who did the, um, the soundtrack for Berserk, Paprika, and, and, um, and Paranoia Agent, Satsumo Hirozawa, I have uh, all of these CDs and they're like fucking amazing, he's a real visionary uh, in terms of music. And so uh, there you go. Suzumi Herzawa, metal. Um, if you want to know my favorite metal band, Therion and uh, Kalma. Uh, but I did a heavy metal package video about Therion, so you can learn all about them in my video. Awesome. Sweet. Uh, no. uh, sorry. I'm sorry, uh, Susie, I kind of switched up the order here, so you got to. When I ask a question, you got to follow me along with me, so. I have the next question, then the next two is yours, and then I kind of deleted a couple, so... Okay. <laughs> you know, so just go with the flow. <clears throat> uh, the next question is, what's your favorite song that you listen to all the time? Uh, favorite song I listen to all the time right now is the March of Halo Milos. But, uh, from the, 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 the Xbox Live Arcade game, Halo Milo. Um, right now, that's when I'm listening nonstop. Like I'm, I'm always putting that music on. But I, uh, but other other than that, I think it's the uh, before that it was the Dream Dreams um, uh, uh, song from Nights in Dreams on the Sega Saturn that I got uh, most uh, a lot of people from that gathered glasses to sing in this uh, They Gather the Glasses sing-along video because it, it is one of my favorite songs. Uh, so I wanted to have everybody singing that song. Um, it came out as a very nice video, even though I can't sing, but Mars Girl can, and uh, so uh, could Happy Harry. Seb Panda was in this video before he was uh, fully featured on, this, uh, on the side, now I realize it. Um, yeah, Dream Dreams from uh, Nights in Dreams or uh, March of Illuminos. Right now, that's what I'm listening to a lot. Sweet. Awesome. And uh, what's your favorite video game soundtrack that we might or might not know? Uh, favorite video game soundtrack? Um, well, it got to be Gene Power. 
Um, but I, I, I already like declared my love to Gene Taylor's soundtrack multiple times, and 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 too bad that you know I grew up listening to that soundtrack a lot, and then people came out to that get the glasses saying, um, you know that soundtrack is a ripoff of one song from YS from the YS series. I was like, no way! <laughs> and yes, actually it is. And when I interviewed Chris Hulsbeck, uh, the composer of Jim Power soundtrack, uh, he recognized that uh, Yuzo Koshiro, so the guy from the YS soundtrack and the Actraiser soundtrack, um, was real. He, he was really a fan of that guy, and and that you know it might have been an inspiration for some of the Jim Power song. But it's only one song, uh, one track in a Jim Power soundtrack. The rest is amazing anyway, and. And as it is, even if uh, one of the tracks uh, sounds like a rip off, it's a gorgeous track anyway. Mm -hmm. So, Jim Power. Awesome. And um, Mike's next question is Facebook, Twitter, or Form Spring? Both. <laughs> Both. All of them. I use all of them and I'm addicted to all of them. Good to know I'm on Facebook all the time as well. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay. And like I said, I deleted a few questions, so I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. So, okay. is there anybody from that guy with the glasses or blister thumbs that you would like to collab or do a crossover with? Um, I'd like to get that fucking podcast episode about Paul Verhoeven done with TJ. Uh, that'd be good. Uh, but apart from that, uh, I think... Uh, I like to do something, you know, um, I play along with Mars Girl on GameFap a lot, uh, but I think that uh, next time maybe I'll, I'll try to have either Scarlet or Hezu Otaku uh, on GameFap or Let's Fap. That'd be cool, that'd be fun, and that'd be unexpected for people. Um, well, <laughs> you can't expect Scarlet to be in that sort of thing, but, um, you know, she, she's not on the side a lot. Uh, so that, that, that'd be a neat way to, to have her, uh, is like reading dialogues of a very, very dirty, naughty uh, hentai <laughs> games. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 or just do a taco, because uh, she's like, I think she's the youngest, she's like barely 19, and, uh, and, and that'd be fun to have like this uh, little innocent girl say the worst shit. That'd be fun. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be interesting to see. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the last question that I have is, what's your favorite game that we might or might not know? You know, uh, the Games You Might Not Know series was first um, first created because I wanted to talk about my favorite games that nobody knew. Um, so I'm pretty much, uh, <coughs> as far as my favorite games go, uh, yeah, I think I'm done now to, to tell you. Like, uh, I couldn't tell you like one of my fav all-time favorite games that I didn't talk about, either game soundtrack you might not know or games you might not know. Um, one of my all-time favorites is, yeah, Jim Power, as I said, or mm -hmm. Guardian Heroes on the Sega Saturn. That's one of my favorite games on that system. Mm -hmm. Or Power Slave, fucking awesome game. Um, but, yeah... Um, that's pretty much, yeah, these are pretty much my favorite games. Mm -hmm. My two favorite games. On PC, I'd say um, The Elder Scrolls 3, but uh, everybody knows that game. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we got about ten minutes left, and we are going straight into Susie's questions, and there's about six of them left. Good. <laughs> <laughs> so we're almost done. So, Susie, you can start off your own questions now. Okie dokie. Um, right, Benza, my first question is, what, in your opinion, are the defining characteristics of a bad video game? Uh, bad video game, um, it depends. Uh, the game can be completely off what it was originally intended to be, uh, kind of like Heavy Rain, for example. Um, or it cannot, or uh, one uh, other problem that a bad video game can have 
is that it has either very shitty gameplay or no gameplay at all, like mm-hmm. Heavy Rain. Yeah. Uh, it can have uh, graphics that are technically good but end up being really weird or very weird animation, like Heavy Rain, for mm-hmm. example, where they did the facial animation uh, aside from the, the motion capture, and it really shows because people look like they're stone at or their ass all the time. <laughs> um, uh, but, 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 but you know, like, you know, this is just like, you know, Heavy Rain is a good game if you take it objectively. Um, because there are games that are objectively bad, but they're not even worth mentioning. For example, like Ninja Bread Man on the Wii. Because mm-hmm. that's a game that someone spent, a team, maybe a team of ten, spent like a week doing and then they change the setting, they, they change the textures and sell it as another game. Obviously, that's the worst game on the Wii, for example, mm-hmm. but is it worth mentioning? No, because it's self, you know, it, it, it speaks for itself. It just, uh, nobody worked on it, pretty much. Um, whereas, like, uh, it's more disappointing and it looks worse when a game, people worked on it a lot and ends up ver- being very crappy. Yeah. Uh, so I think, uh, but what kills it for me in terms of experience, um, I think would be like um, the pace. If the game bores bores uh, bores the fuck out of you, uh, mm-hmm. then I'm done. Because I can't stand too much text, I can't stand too much cinematics where I can't play. Um, because I'm playing a game. There you go. Okay, though. Um, and uh, if you were asked to write the third anniversary special of that guy with the glasses, what would the storyline be? Um, if if it was to be a movie, I think it'd be a musical. Uh, uh, even though I can't sing, uh, I'd like a musical with like dance, uh, with like dance off and uh, and rivalry. Uh, I'm not sure what that would be, uh, but it'd be it'd be cool. Um, or it could be a parody of a well-known movie, mm-hmm. um, like it could be a parody of Transformers 2, or um, <laughs> like uh, you know, trying to be like uh, trying to do a spoof. Uh, that'd be fun. Um, yeah. I actually like that um, because let's be honest, we're not going to do a serious movie. You know, it's that guy the glasses. If we were going to do like serious drama then nobody would watch it. Exactly. Uh, so I think, movie spoof, uh, I think a movie spoof would be, would be great um, because it wouldn't be based on fan service. Like, it wouldn't be based on, like, the different memes that we have going on on that guy with the glasses alone, but it would be based on more general um, comical stuff, which I think would be, uh, would be a good thing for a third year, uh, for a third year anniversary. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I think it'd be a legitimate spoof. A legitimate spoof, maybe not of Twilight because that's been done to death. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. But maybe as of uh, something else popular. Um, I just don't know why. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. All right, we got four questions left in about ten, fifteen, ten minutes left, or okay. five minutes left. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Yeah, I can do them in five. So we have four questions left. <clears throat> uh, Susie reviews crappy blockbuster movies that should never have made money at the box office, but for some reason they did. What's the worst blockbuster movie you ever saw in your life? Oh, fucking Hall Third and the Invisibles. No question asked. <laughs> no question. It is the worst movie, and yet people in France went to see it a lot. And, and then, you know, like, there's this amusement park uh, not that far away from my place, and they have an attraction, like they have uh, this 3D roller coaster thing about Author and the Invisibles. It has to be oh fucking God. terrible. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yeah, so I've got another movie right. to review then. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> uh, uh, which do you prefer, playing games you played in your childhood on your original consoles or playing games from your childhood with better graphics on up-to-date console? Um, 
You know, like, yeah, um, I don't really care for that. Uh, you know, I'm okay with playing on the real system or on an emulator. It's, it's, these are two different experiences. Sometimes I want to play the old stuff. Sometimes I want to play update with updated graphics. Um, well, it depends on the mood, but to me, there are two different experiences. Uh, I don't prefer one over the other. Okay. Okay. Hey, um, now, what would you say is the best line you've ever heard in a movie, like, ever? Best line? Uh, I think that's the line in... Uh, J- well, the, the one that comes to my mind right now, at least, is the one from Jay and Siren Bob. Uh, when they find out that uh, they are um, they are being mocked uh, online on a, on some stupid ass movie forum, and 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 to Jay, the, his biggest concern is that um, I, I don't know the English line, I only know the the, the French uh, dub version, but he's basically saying that yeah, yeah, but what happens if we find like a very hot chick and she wants to blow us like real hard, and then she's asking she's asking us for our names, and we and I say Jay and Silent Bob, and she's like, oh, I read online you were two motherfuckers, and then she goes off and blows some other dudes. Um, <laughs> I think that's that's one of my favorite parts. <laughs> Okie doke. Um, right. Now, the last question for you, Benzai. Uh, like yourself, I am a huge fan of the movie Muppets Christmas Carol, as you mentioned in your top five movies of the 90s. I love it. Yeah. Um, where you basically said it was one of Michael Caine's best performances. What would you say, yeah. is, my, what would you say is Michael Caine's worst performance ever? Uh, I'm not sure I've seen all of his movies. Uh... Um, but so yeah, I, maybe I should have before saying that Muppet Christmas Carol was his best performance, but it is a very good performance. Mm-hmm. Um, his worst performance, I don't know. Uh, no, I, I'm not sure he's since he is, he's a really good actor. I'm not sure uh, he's he's done like very crappy stuff. Maybe he's been in some crappy movies, but I'm not sure his acting would have been bad. I can't really imagine him like going. Like you know, really bad, crazy, insane. Uh, so I, 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 I couldn't tell because I'm not a Michael Caine fan, to be honest. Mm-hmm. No problem. <laughs> so you do. All right. So that is it. That's all the questions we got. And uh, this has been Attack of the Awesome Interviews. I'm your host, Mike. Along with me was Susie. Yep. And we are saying goodbye. <laughs> goodbye, Bye, folks. Guys. Au revoir. Thanks Au revoir. very much. Thanks very much for coming, Benzai. No Thanks for listening. <laughs> Thanks for listening, guys. Ciao. I am going to add Ben Zion. Okie dokie. See if this is gonna work. I'm still recording. Woohoo! Hey guys, what's up? Hey, not much. What's up with you, dude? Hey. Um, not so much. Uh, you know, I actually put my um my alarm clock uh, so I could wake up like a little bit um like uh, 30 minutes before the interview so hey, I'm, I'm still uh, I'm still just right after breakfast right now just for you guys okay awesome <laughs> sweet <laughs> it's 5 8 it's 5 p.m. but uh, yeah I just woke up well, I just, <laughs> that's home <laughs> <laughs> seems the same thing for all their interviews so far doing them in the morning <sighs> Sorry if you are just coming from walking dogs all day. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> Long, uh, let me get some water. Yeah, I do that. No problem. Alright. Mm. Like bad. Like I said, we got two questions at a time. Oh, that's good. This one. So it might be a little quicker. Mm. Yeah. yeah, there we go. Oh, righty then. <laughs> uh, 
All right, I am going to uh, introduce the interview, then I'm going to introduce you, and we'll go straight to the questions. Okay. All right, <clears throat> time, <clears throat> time for the podcast warm-ups. <clears throat> <clears throat> there we go. <clears throat> <clears throat> Um, and are you, there you go. are you ever going to do a nostalgia critic style retrospective of any movies like the Arthur and the Minimoy films? All right, the, the movie Gendar that I was uh, talking about is called Light Years in the uh, in United States. Uh. <sighs> All right, Susie, do that question again, because I think you cut him off. Oh, right. Let's try that again. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> okay, well, we're, we're on schedule. Cool. Yay! It worked! <laughs> Just on time. Maybe I'll go take a nap now. <laughs> take another nap. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, thanks for the questions. They were a bit... Uh, I think they were not in order, though. Like, you had like some very different yeah, questions to each other. But but it was fun. It was fun to you. Uh, make sure you link me when it's online. Yes, indeed, I will. I'll, I'll put it on my website. I'll, I'll relink it. Awesome. Wait. Thanks very much for answering our our crazy questions, Pensai. No problem. <laughs> Have a good nap. All right. Thank you, guys. Take, Take it care. Easy. You Bye. Too. Bye.